Right, rewind to 2018, that year, a year that no one had heard of a lockdown. No one had heard of a pandemic. No one had even heard of Truffle Marmite, come to think of it. It is a thing. I'm gonna put the link below just in case you don't believe me. But it was also a time when mainstream electric cars were starting to get quite good. However, there was still a small problem. If you wanted truly usable range, you had to shell out quite a lot of cash for something like a Tesla or a Jaguar I-Pace until a couple of more affordable cars started hitting the market that offered just a little bit more for us mere mortals. One was the Kia e-Nero and the other was this, the Hyundai Kona Electric. And you know what, because the Kona Electric was actually one of the first cars out of the blocks, it actually means there's a really decent secondhand market for them. So I'm gonna go have a delve, see what I can find, but I think you are gonna be pleasantly surprised. Ah, oh, the good old days of 2018. Ah, oh, child-free, stress-free. I actually had a life. Anyway, it was also a time when a semi-affordable electric car that offered 280 miles of range was a gentle game changer. But that's exactly what the 64 kilowatt hour Kona offered. 280 plus miles of WLTP range in the form of a small, practical, soft roader. And better than that, when the UK government was really pushing electric in 2018, it was offered with a four and a half thousand pound government plug-in car grant. So that was money straight back into your pocket for a car with the most range that qualified for the grant at that time. Suddenly, charging infrastructure wasn't so much of a problem and longer commutes and trips became easy. Well, easier. And that was mainly down to the 201 brake horsepower motor up front and the 64 kilowatt hour battery that the longer range Kona was packing under the floor. There was also a smaller, more urban biased 39 kilowatt hour version with a still pretty good 194 miles of range though that also has less power at 134 brake horsepower. It was also less popular with buyers, so you won't see many of them for resale. Okay, so the good news is that there are plenty of pre-loved cars out and about at the moment. But the big question is, what kind of money are we talking about for a second-hand electric Kona? Well, first, I just want to point out why we're starting to see more of a supply. I think mainly because there are just more electric cars out there. Supply is starting to really meet the demands there are at the moment. Um, and also the prices have started to correct a bit. They are slowly becoming more affordable. So more people are purchasing, more demand. And finally, that supply, uh, that demand is being met with the supply. Also, quite interestingly, quite a lot of the electric cars are now coming out of their lease arrangements, again, increasing the supply. So consequently, we are gonna find a really good deal. Um, now, if we're looking at the Kona Electric, I think the car we should start off with is the 64 kilowatt hour battery. You can pick up a Kona Electric for between 16 and 17,000 pounds. You're paying a little bit of a premium because of the lower mileage, but all in all, I think that's a pretty good deal. There are cars for less. Um, there's one here that has a much higher mileage, but you can get it for 14,000 pounds. So you just need to weigh up what your budget really is. It's quite nice to see that quite a few of the Konas do have high mileage, and that's naturally going to happen if we go for a car with a bigger battery, it can do a longer range. Another point worth mentioning, so Konas were originally, they were made in a place called Olsan in South Korea. Um, and consequently, not that many were actually coming over to the UK. Supply was quite low. But from 2020, they started being manufactured in the Czech Republic in Europe, and supply then started to increase. So there are a lot more cars available from the 2020 plate onwards. Okay, it's not cheap as chips. We're fully aware of that. But it is a decent chance at a really practical, reliable, and longer range electric car for super mini money. And don't forget that Hyundai's come with a really good and transferable, that's an important part, a transferable five-year warranty with eight years guarantee on the battery. So there's still plenty of backup if there is an issue. 
So what are you actually looking at with the Kona? Well, back in the day, the electric version of the Kona had to stand out from the ones with engines. So you got a bespoke front grille, aero tweaks along the front and side, and dedicated 17 inch alloy wheels, all aimed at improving airflow. And you know what? It looks pretty good, especially compared to the, how should we put it? Slightly frumpy Kia e Nero. Okay, so they're all five seaters with a hatch, and I'd say there's enough space. There's not plenty of space. Uh, don't plan on putting your five-a-side football team plus all the kit in there, but it's enough to work with, that's for sure. Now, it got a big facelift in 2021, and with that, you got bigger screens and a slightly different exterior look. Plus, there were some software tweaks. So in total, with all of that, you've got over 300 miles of range. So really quite impressive on that side. Um, but worth noting, no bigger on the inside, and it was obviously more money. And there's no frunk in any of them, which is always a bit sad. It is worth remembering though, in 2018, when the first Kona Electric went on sale, the first cars only came with galactic grey as the no-cost option, which is why you see so many on the roads in that colour. Um, any other colour was an extra of 565 quid. Premium, or Premium SE, had the option for £420 to go for a two-tone roof. So a quick, easy way to spot if you're going for a car with two-tone, it probably has decent equipment with it. And speaking of inside and more kit, different models and grades added things like privacy glass, LED rear lights, front parking sensors, auto windscreen wipers, extra inches on the infotainment display, sat-nav, wireless charging, and a fancy Quell audio system. Not bad. The 64 kilowatt hour version commanded a just over three grand premium, and you had to pay for the top spec if you wanted partial leather seats, heated, ventilated, electric front seats, and a heated steering wheel. Worth having though, so look out for that premium SE spec. But this isn't a particularly forward-thinking interior in any grade, especially compared to some of the newer stuff. The multimedia, eh, it looks a bit clunky. The silver plastic, a bit shiny. It all works, but this ain't a spaceship. Now, I think the biggest surprise about the Kona is that it actually still feels pretty perky to drive. 204 brake horsepower and a 0 to 62 mile per hour time of seven and a half seconds. So within that range, you're going to be able to keep up with most things on the road. However, it does need a bit of finessing when you pull away from the junction. If you're one of those people that likes to boot it, uh, you're probably going to spin the front wheels and you might even trigger the traction control. So there you go. I have warned you. It also feels a little bit heavier, a little bit firmer than some of the electric cars we're seeing being released at the moment. Um, also, I'd say the ride is quite hard. Um, it's not the most comfortable of drives. Uh, suspension is a little bit hard. And uh, I've got to say, as a woman in my condition, I am maybe more aware of it, but it's not hugely comfortable. Now, big battery Konos might be really good at range. However, there is a downside. They don't actually charge that quickly if you're on a fast charger because the first cars had 50 kilowatt charging and the later ones 77 kilowatts. So even if you're in a fast charging situation, you're still going to be looking at maybe 45 minutes for a 10 to 80% charge, which is fine. Now, if you're charging at home, not so bad. It's going to take 10 hours from flat to full, but you're at home, so it doesn't really matter. Overall, I think this is a good bet if you're looking at secondhand EVs, particularly if you rely mostly on home charging. Now, as ever, make sure you take a good look for stone chips on the front of the car if it's done lots of motorway miles, and make sure it's not had a front bump. It's more expensive than normal to fix because of the position of that charge point. It has to be said though, that one of the good things about Hyundai is that five year warranty and the fact that it doesn't actually really seem to ever use it or need it. There's only really been one recall on the Kona and that affected versions made between the 9th of May and the 19th of December, 2018. It could prevent one or more of the airbags from deploying in a collision. Now that should have been corrected at a dealer, but it's definitely worth checking that the work has been carried out. 
but overall, they are super reliable. Now, there is probably one final thing that I should mention, because as we're filming all of this, prices for previous Konas are likely going to take a little dip. And that's because there's an all new one that is just about to hit our streets. And would you believe it? We have a first look video on this very channel that you can take a look at. So as soon as you finish watching this, head on over and you can compare the two. Um, but overall, I think that's a bit of a summary, a bit of a bluffer's guide there to a second-hand Hyundai Kona. And um, I think personally, it's a car that is well worth some pre-loved attention. Well, if it was down to me, I would probably go for as most recent as possible and also as low mileage as possible. And I would probably go for the premium SE grade. And I still think it's possible to get a car like that for about half the price of a new one, which is a pretty good deal. I honestly think the Kona is a safe bet when it comes to secondhand electric cars. It's going to cover lots of bases, but it also has some pretty decent competition out there. So if you do want to know anything about new or used electric cars, then head on over to electrifying.com. Thanks for watching.